Hello friends, Jermaine here and welcome to this video. In today's package of the week, we are going to be looking at the DCLI package, formerly known as DShell. And what DCLI does is it allows us to write shell scripts based on the Dart language rather than writing them in Bash or something like PowerShell. It takes common shell commands and implements those commands as uh, top level Dart functions. So if we come to the docs, we've got some examples here. So we're going to go through some of these examples and see what we can come up with. Let's get started. To get started, you need DCLI installed and that involves running two commands pub global activate dcli this installs the package globally so that we can use the command line executable and secondly we need to run sudo dcli underscore install to complete the installation this involves some extra setup that dcli needs to do now this step is optional you don't have to run it but might be to your best interest to run this as well if it doesn't work for some reason don't worry just move on in my pubspec.yaml file i've also added the the DCLI dependency and I've added another dependency for the YAML package we're going to be using that later on once we've met the prerequisites we can create our first script if you do DCLI help that gives you the list of commands that we are able to invoke we need to run the create command to create our first script so I'll do that now is DCLI create and then the name of our script I'll have the script in the bin directory and I'll just call it my script dot dot okay so that script is now available over here in our bin directory and let's go ahead and run this script by doing bin and then my script dot dot so it puts some dependencies together and we need to pass in a prompt i'll specify the prompt flag and then we'll set world and we get is this your response and then i'll select y for yes and that's it it ends over here okay so this is what the generated script does looking at this script now this file starts with the um, I believe it's called a shebang and makes this file unexecutable. So we are able to also run this um, using DCLI. So we can do DCLI run, which will essentially do the same, but I'm not going to go through the whole example again. And I'm not going to spend too much time on this file because we're going to be clearing it out. Let's get rid of all of this. And we are going to do this from scratch. So let's start by printing out some text to the console. So this is based on the example in the docs. I'll create a variable called username and then we can prompt the user by saying username. So whatever the user enters in there will be will be assigned to username as a string. So let's just print it out. Let's try this right now. Okay, so I'll type my username and then we get Jermaine and then the process exits. Okay, let's um, grab a password. We are also able to specify a hidden option and then I'll set that to true. By default, it's false. And then let's print that out as well. Let's see what that gives us. Okay, so I enter my username. I'll enter my password and then there we go also with ask we can specify some validation in the user's input and then we got various validators we can use so ask validator all we can validate based on ip addresses we can validate based on max length and so on and so forth so for this example let's say we want the min length of the password to be five so let's go ahead and run this so it's less than five characters then we get an error message let's make it pass and then here we go all right you can also expect a confirmation message so we can do confirm we'll ask do you wish to proceed and let's assign this to a variable so over here we can have an if condition so if it's agreed you can print let's roll or else we just print by so if i run this if i agree shows let's roll and if i disagree we get by okay so i'll just amend this to say if they disagree then we want to stop executing the script and then let's go ahead and create a directory using the create the top level function that comes with dcli create a temp directory if we hover over this create the also allows us to set the recursive option so if we've got multiple directories like that just set recursive to true and it'll go ahead and create each directory it also returns a string containing the directory that was created so i'll create a path variable and let's just print it out such let's give this a go okay so it's gone ahead and created a directory 
and we see that here it's empty right now so let's go ahead and add some files in there we can create a file by defining the path to the file as a string so we'll say temp and we'll create a text.txt and the string type has been extended with a couple of extra methods so we've got the write method now which means we're able to create the file and write to it at the same time so for now let's just write our username and password and once i write the file i also want to append some text to the file so I'll invoke append and we'll just say created on and we'll just add the current date. So let's save this and run this. And we are getting an exception because the temp directory already exists. So with this command, if we hover over this, it says here that if the path already exists, an exception is thrown. So let's go ahead and wrap this part in a conditional. And I'll say if, and I'll use the exists function. And let's move this in here. So if we want to check if the temp directory doesn't exist, then let's go ahead and create it. And then let's run this again. Okay, so now we've got our text.txt file created with our initial username password combination, as well as this line that we appended to the file. We can use the copy command to create a copy of our text file and we'll create a text copy.txt file. And then let's go ahead and dump the contents of our copy by using the cat command. Then we'll specify text copy.txt. Okay, let's run this. Okay, so we've got the contents of our text copy and then the text copy.txt file has been created. We can run this also using the string approach. So we can do cut and then we can use the for each method, which will return the file line by line. In this example, we'll just print out the line. Okay, it fails because text copy already exists. So let's just set the overwrite option. Okay, I'll do this again. Okay, so we got the file's contents line by line. A couple more things we can do. We can use the find command to search for certain files. So this takes in the glob pattern syntax. So we'll search for all text files and then we can log those out. And I'll quickly go ahead and add another command which will allow us to tail files. So this is based on the string approach. And rather than doing a for each, we can simply do run. We'll just go ahead and run this command and then output whatever the result is to the console. I'll run this again. Whoops, sorry, it's meant to be that. Okay, so the find command gives us this for each of our files that have been found, matching the txt extension. And then the tail command gives us that by doing an one, which should log out the very last line of the file. There we go. We can move files using the move function. So in this example, we'll move text.txt into credentials.txt. And since this doesn't exist, it will just rename this to that. So let's test it out. Okay, and there we go. It's been renamed to credentials.txt and we've got that here. And then let's add a confirm prompt. I'll just say, are we done? If so, we can go ahead and delete either the file or the directory. So to delete a file, just use the delete function and then a path to the file. You can also delete a directory by doing delete there and then we'll specify the directory. And let's run this. Actually, just to demonstrate delete there works, we will pause for a couple of seconds and then we'll go ahead and delete the temp directory just so we can see this bit working. And I'll set the overwrite option here to true as well. Don't know why I keep forgetting that. All right, so at the confirmation, there are various ways we can say yes. So we can say Y for yes. We can also type yes and we can also just type true. And for the no option, we, it will either be N, no, or false. So if I say false, then nothing should happen. But then if I repeat the whole process and I say yes, for instance, it deletes credentials.txt, then after a couple of seconds, the temp directory disappears. Okay, so we can go ahead and compile this file to a native executable. So we can do that using the Dart to Native tool. And this comes pre-installed with Dart. So if you if you have Dart installed, you already have Dart to Native as part of it. You don't need to do any extra steps. So Dart to Native takes in the starting Dart file. And then we need to specify an output. So we use the O flag. And then our output will just be bin. Then we'll just call it my script. So if I go ahead and run this, Okay, so we've generated my script here, which is our executable. So we can run this by 
accessing it as such and then um, and then it takes us through the whole steps again and i'll select yes and i should delete it after a couple of seconds okay cool all right so we've got a good gist of how dcli works under the hood and the functions that it provides we can in fact also color code these strings we've got a variety of colors we can use so for instance i can make this string orange such i can make the password blue and i can make the confirm red if i go ahead and run this one more time we get the password as blue and then we get confirm as red and the last confirm as orange let's make this green all right and then we got that as green i'm gonna go ahead and create another script and this script is going to be a port of this small script written by luke so this script will check a dart or flutter projects for any dependencies that are unused so luke originally wrote this in node js but then i suggested he implement it in dart and his response was go for it so let's do that i'll create a new script called unused depths dot dart and let's make sure it's in the bin directory okay so i open that and let's empty this okay so because we're going to be running the script in a directory that contains a pubspec.yaml file let's go ahead and load our pubspec file and i'm going to pull in the yaml package that i added earlier on in our pubspec.yaml file and once we've got that we can invoke the load yaml function which takes in a yaml string so this will be our pubspec file and then it converts it into a map like object in fact let's go ahead and print it out so we know what that looks like okay so that looks like that with key value pairs we can also use the echo command to print out to the console so if we look at luke's example we print out this text so i'm just using the line break to put it on the next line the only difference between echo and print is echo does not create a new line after this text is printed so by default new line is false so let's go ahead and set new line to true but ideally you're better off just using print but this option is there as well whenever you need it let's go ahead and define the function that will be responsible for searching the lib directory for unused dependencies we've got this function called print list of unused packages with indents and this function takes in a map containing a key value pair collection of packages so for now let's just print this out to the console just so we know what it looks like our print dependencies and let's print that we'll get the dependencies map from our doc variable let's run this okay so that gives us that so from this map we can just do a for loop that checks for the package name in each of the packages keys we'll be checking if the package is used in the project and if it is we'll not do anything but if it isn't we'll output that in the console as an as one of the unused dependencies so let's create a final variable called is using package so all of this is just based on luke's example and there is a function which takes in the package name let's go ahead and define that function and in here we'll have a try catch block what we are going to attempt to do is by running the grep command we'll pass in flags and we are going to match for that and we'll do for each so just to explain briefly we are looking in the lib directory and using the grep tool we are matching for files that have got an import which means it's importing a package and then the name of the package that will be passed into this function so if it exists we just return true which means that the package is being used if it doesn't exist this grep command throws an exception so we return false so at this point we get a boolean result so let's do a check if we're not using the package then let's just print out to the console add a bit of spacing and then we'll have the package name so let's run this and see what we get okay so running that gives us the dcli package and the yaml package as dependencies that we're not using because although we have it defined in our pubspec.yaml file if you go in the lib directory 
and we look at our demo dot file we're just using path so if i go ahead and and add the yaml package dependency and i run this again we should just get dcli so we can also go ahead and check our dependency overrides section if it exists and then we can check our dev dependencies so let's run this again okay so we get the getter keys was called on null yeah because we don't actually have dependency overrides in here so let's just do a quick check in here so if packages is null we'll just print out no packages found and then we'll just return from this function let's run this again okay so that gives us something like that and it's also gone ahead and checked our dev dependencies we are not importing pedantic or test and lastly i'll just go ahead and add some line breaks over here and then for each of these packages let's just make it orange okay let's run this one more time all right and that gives us something like that of course you can customize this as much as you want but i'm gonna end the video here thank you for watching if you enjoyed it hit that like button and also share this video so others get to know about it i'd recommend taking a look at the dcli documentation because there's a lot more that you can do with this if you're not a subscriber hit that subscribe button and hit the bell notification icon so you don't miss out on any future updates any questions let me know down in the comments below you can also reach out to the author and i'll see you in the next video